Hello everyone and welcome back to Amity Bloom. Today I'm going to share with you guys some of the things that I like to use to decorate my music paper roll um, projects that we made together. So I have this box right in front of me and inside of here I keep some of the things that I like to decorate in this style. Metal trinkets is always one of my favorite things to use in not only my journals but in projects. I have different types of stamps, so some wooden stamps made out of rubber, some acrylic stamps. These are really nice because you get to see the image directly onto the paper. Of course, you need some type of ink pad if you're going to be using stamps. I like using this one by Ranger. I suggest not only having a black ink pad, but also a brown ink pad. And you don't have to use Distress Inks by Tim Holtz. This is just the one that's most popular, but you can use a brown one. Any type of brown ink pad would do. I have some more wooden rubber stamps here. I love this one. May all your weeds be wildflowers. Sometimes we're surrounded by weeds around us and you need to weed them out. <laughs> you need to get rid of them and hopefully they'll turn into wildflowers or you can just get rid of them because you don't need them in your life. <laughs> Here is one of my favorite and newest things that I purchased. It's an alphabet um, stamp set. It's an alphabet stamp and number set. This is what it looks like. I absolutely adore it. It's on Amazon for I think 10 to $11 and if you have Amazon Prime you can get this in a couple of days. This has become a staple of mine and it's in such cute little packaging. You want to also have a little distress tool. This is the one that I have closest to me on my desk but you can also use any type of sponge. If you have already tea stained your papers, you really don't need the distress tool unless you want for a more antique look on the sides of your papers. For the textiles that I'm using, just vintage lace and some cottons and some linens. And for the papers, it really varies between what you have in your stash. Some scraps of book pages, vintage ones, this really pretty and old vintage script ephemera, some tissue paper, and some handmade paper as well. So these are all the things that I'm going to be using to decorate my piano paper roll projects. I might not even use all of them, but that's completely fine. You just want to make sure you pull out all of the things that you think would be beneficial and that you'd like to use for your projects. So to start off, let's move this a little bit to the front. My biggest tip that I can share is with the piano roll paper, you don't want to take anything away from it. It's actually an antique item. It's not even a vintage item. It's considered an antique item. When you're working with heirlooms or antique treasures, you don't want to over embellish. So I would never with this add like a butterfly sticker or heart stickers to it because it will, you know, devalue the antique value that it already has for being this old. Let's say you have a really old antique card. You're not going to put a bumper sticker on it, you know? So that's kind of how I view antique pieces. I don't want to take away the value from it from over embellishing. So let me put these aside. Let's start out with the insert, the Traveler's Notebook insert. And I want to finish this first because I'm so excited to start using it. If you guys remember, we just covered up a regular craft insert that you can find for a couple of dollars online or at your local um, Michaels. And what I did is I took out the inside pages. The inside pages were just white paper. And I really don't like the look of the white paper contrasting the piano paper roll. So because these were stapled, all you have to do is pull it apart. And then you can recycle this into another TN or you can tea stain it or coffee stain it or just use it for any other project that you have. So now what you essentially have is the cover, the cover that you made or redecorated as I should say. <laughs> so for the papers on the inside, I decided to use some of my favorite papers. I purchased some of this recycled craft paper. It takes fountain pen really well and I went ahead and sewed some pages to make little pockets. Super simple and just perfect for creating an insert. Perfect for a traveler's notebook insert for note taking, for list making, for planning. Even for journaling, if you like to just write and add minimal decoration, this would be perfect. So that's what I did to customize it even more to go with the same style of the piano roll paper. As you can see, it's the same tint. 
I don't want to take too much away from the words. I would never cover up the words because that's like a signature of what the piano paper roll has. It's always those blue words. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stamp. I want to put a stamp right here. And I think the stamp that I'm going to use is this one. However, I don't just want to stamp it on there. I want to create some type of dimension. So let me go through my scraps of paper. I know I'm going to use some of that. All right, I think this is what I'm going to do. So let me grab this here real quick so that I have a nice hard surface to stamp on. My table is real wood. It's not like a backdrop. It's actually reclaimed vintage wood, and so I painted it white, so it's very bumpy, and it's a rough surface. So I'm going to use this as my little block. But I'm going to stamp on this tissue paper. And this one, I got it in some packaging for a fabric order. So I'm just going to take my stamp and I'm just going to stamp it right on top. Beautiful. Now all you want to do is cut around it. You can also tear it if you want a more rustic look to it. I'm just going to cut it up. Very simple, just like that. And do you see how that instantly gives it more dimension as if you just stamped it right on top? I really enjoy doing this for my journaling and for my journals. I think it just adds a little bit more dimension to your page or to the cover of your journal. So now I know I wanna include some of this paper also. So let me cut a little bit of that. And let's go ahead and add some music paper. Not music paper. Let's go ahead and add some book paper. I don't want to cover up those words like I said before. The way that you use your materials varies person to person. I'm just going to glue that right in the center, just like that. And if you do use tissue paper, you want to be super careful because it can rip very easily. You want to make sure you're fragile with it. You want to treat it with love and tenderness. <laughs> Oops, I almost put it backwards. <laughs> I put it upside down. You wanna be careful. Cause with tissue paper especially, once you glue it down, there's no coming back. It's stuck on there forever. There we go, it's like a tattoo. You're putting a permanent tattoo on your journal. And if you really just go back and forth, the tissue paper kind of withers and you can easily just pull it apart. But this is what I love, these little mistakes and oopsies add character, they're permanent creative tattoos on your journals and on your layouts. So let's go up here, you guys, let's see. I kinda wanna add a little square piece there. I could even add it here, but I don't, I feel like I need to continue the embellishing on this side to bring more emphasis on where the words are. Let's start off cutting off a little piece and then we can see where we like to place it. I really like the placement of that. I just want to make it shorter. I want it to be behind the first words just so that it doesn't take anything away from the words. We're, just, we're going to enhance what we already have. We're not trying to cover it up. We're trying to enhance what's naturally already so beautiful and full of meaning. That's sometimes the hardest thing for some people to include in their creations is the meaning behind it. I always say don't ever create unless there's meaning behind it, unless it makes you happy, unless you're trying to represent something really important through your art. If you're trying to spread a message through your art, it can be a message to yourself. It doesn't have to be a message to anyone else other than you. There we go. I really like that. I feel like we're missing something. So let me quickly grab a stamp. All right, here's my box of stamps, the vintage stamps. And that's exactly what we were missing. <laughs> Let's pop that over there. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Beautiful. And you don't have to use a real vintage stamp. You can use a stamp that you print off from online if you need to. So that's pretty much all I'm going to do for the front. I really enjoy how that looks 
we haven't taken anything away from the beauty and the antique history of the piano paper roll. We've enhanced where the lettering is by keeping the collage on the right side of the page. If you added a collage here, it wouldn't be any problem. You'd actually complete the rule of thirds. But I'm considering the letters as part of the rule of thirds. So we already have three elements here. There's no need to add more. I adore all of this from the piano paper roll. However, I think we do need something. What I'm going to add on the back is just some stamping on some paper. This is actually going to be my designer book. And when I mean designer book, um, I mean a book where I sketch where I write down my ideas for future products, ideas, and, you know, collections. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some double-sided tape, just because this is thicker cardstock, so I want to make sure it gets um, a nice grip and hold on the piano paper roll. And I'm just going to place it right there. So when you open the book, this is what it looks like. Super simple, definitely extremely simple, but I really, really enjoy how this notebook has turned out. And then of course on the inside, I will decorate it and write in it however I see fit while I'm using it. So this is the first project that I'm happy to say is finished. So moving on to the floating pockets, what I'm like to do is I'm going to add some inking. And that's pretty much it. Nothing crazy, nothing that's going to over embellish the page. Just some simple stamping. And then on this one, it probably will do like half of a wildflower. Just like that. Oh, that looks so pretty. That one was easy, wasn't it? And that's pretty much all that I like to do. Really easy, like I said. Moving on to the waterfall pocket. The waterfall floating pocket where we have a tag, a journal card, and then the two pocket spaces. So for this one, I want to do a little bit more. I want to add some fabric on the bottom, some textiles. And... I've got this really pretty lace as well as this really old button strip from an antique shirt. And I think I'm going to just cut a little bit off and then cut a little bit off. And I'm just going to place that right along there. And then we can do some happy marks. Normally, I don't use fabric glue for attaching my fabrics onto my projects. I love the look of passing it through the sewing machine, but because this has already been sewn and I don't want to sew the pocket even more closed because then we won't have enough space. And to add that dimension of sewing, we're going to add some happy marks on the bottom. So I have a needle and some embroidery floss. And I'm using a burgundy color. So now all I'm going to do is come through here. So this is what we have right now. I added my little sewing marks at the bottom to give it some color. And now what we're going to do is you want to decorate the tag and the journal card. Now, of course, the journal card, I'm just going to be using it to journal on the back. And so on the front, I really don't want to include anything too crazy to take away, like I mentioned, from the words. So what I'm probably gonna do is just add some stamping. That's what I really enjoy doing with these types of papers. There we go. And very simple stamping, nothing crazy, but it already adds a different element onto the page. And on the tag, this is when you can add something more decorative on the front, on the top portion. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut off a little bit of this really old vintage French paper. Place that there. Trim the corners off. And what I want to do now is take some of this paper, that really lovely handmade paper, 
and you want to cut just a little bit off. Just glue it right on the side so that when it goes in the pocket, you see that difference of papers right there. And I really, really love that. So now I'm going to do some stamping, of course. I'm going to do the wildflower as well as a little bit of this script right down there at the bottom. A little bit more. There we go. Right at the tippy top. <laughs> tippy top. So that it looks like this paper has some vintage typewriter script on it. You have your tag and your journal card all ready to go, and you have a little bit of your textiles and some embroidery thread incorporated on the bottom. So I really like how that one looks. So let's add it to our pile of finished projects. Now we have this beautiful little flip out envelope that we're going to work on. And then here, I'm going to open this up so that we can open these flaps up, okay? And I want to include some vintage ephemera. So in here, I can include some more journaling space. And then this is a really old letter that I have. Really old, beautiful parchment paper. And I'm just going to include that right in the pocket. And I think I want to include something right in the center. I think I want to grab some of this tissue paper. All right, so I have this French script stamp and just press that in. Beautiful. And we're just going to place that right there. So you can see it adds a little bit of texture. It's not glued on to the envelope because this is an antique piece that we don't want to, we don't want to alter it in any way, shape or form. It's already beautiful. Oh my gosh, that's looking so pretty. And for the washi tape, let's use some leftover piano paper roll. Take that, ink it, there we go, and trim the excess, okay? So that you have something like this. And now all you wanna do is take some double-sided tape and you've basically made your own piano paper roll washi. Oh my gosh, this is so pretty. So I'm just going to add it right there at the bottom. Oh my gosh, this looks so cool. This is so cool. I think I found the newest way that I love using this product. And I think here at the bottom, I want to include some stamping. My favorite word ever. <laughs> it's one of my favorite words. I have lots of favorite words because words are just so lovely. And in my stamp set, the M is super, super short compared to all the other letters. And I love that. I think it's so quirky and so cute. <laughs> So this is that little envelope booklet that we made. Like, imagine receiving this in Happy Mail. Like I would be thriving. <laughs> I would be obsessed to receive that. Moving on to the last little embellishment piece that I wanted to create was with this metal open-faced locket. Piano roll paper can be used to fill out a little space and the way that you would do that is by just stamping a design onto your piano roll paper or you could even use the words or the little marks that are already on the piano roll paper. But I think I want to stamp something. And let's just stamp this vintage script stamp. So cut it into a little square and then you kind of just want to see what you need to trim off. Perfect. There we go. There we go. And it fits so nicely inside of your little locket. So now I'm just going to take some Fabrifix. This adhesive works pretty well. And now what you want to do is you want to add a glaze. I am using this which is called a diamond glaze. It's a water-based dimensional adhesive. And it basically just gives you a gloss-like finish on your art pieces. All right, so that is hardening up as we speak. 
such a great project to do if you get your hands on the piano paper rolls. They are such a timeless treasure that can be lived through our journals. That's the best part, I think, is that we're, we're giving piano paper rolls a new life because they are being forgotten and they don't deserve to. They don't deserve to be. So then we can just take our little charm that we made with the piano paper roll, just like that, and place a nice little flower right on the center. And there you go, you have your beautiful package of piano paper roll projects. I love what we made, you guys. Let me put some paper in here just for some added interest. Oh, I really love what we made. And I hope that this has helped you to look at piano paper roll in a different light. It's not just used for music and it's not just used for um, pages. It can be used for so many things. And with the help of inking and stamping and different types of vintage papers and some textiles, I really love how this little stack looks so elegant and beautiful. Not over embellished, and it is embellished, but with things that complement the antique look. So until next time, I hope that everyone has an amazing day filled with peace and love and a ton of creativity. See you soon. I love you all. Bye-bye.